Hyenas is a 1992 Senegalese film. To talk about the Senegalese film and Western African film in the post-colonial era, his presence in the film really sending us like to think about his positions as a filmmaker. Hello, this is Afro Hada Papa Bu. My name is Hesu. And my name is Josh and welcome. welcome. All right, so... <laughs> Well, we're gonna look at the film named Hyenas. Definitely. So, Hyenas is a 1992 Senegalese film written and directed by the legend himself, Jibril Diop Mabeti. Yeah. Now, the film is inspired in part by a 1956 tragic comic play by another Swiss dramatist by the name of Friedrich Renoir. And in Mabeti's adaptation, the story follows the uh, life of an aging lady by the name of Rama II. She returns to her hometown known as Kolobane, and uh, she offers great wealth and fortune to the villagers of Kolobane in exchange for the murder of another gentleman by the name of Draman Drame. And uh, the reason why she wants Draman murdered is because many years ago, when she was like only 17, Draman got her pregnant and then she, he refused to take responsibility and because of that she uh, Rama to had to leave Kolobane. So first yeah. of all we want to mention that we have been review um, one of Mambeti's film before named Tukibuki. Oh yeah. Classic. Yes, yes. Guess which one? Mm -hmm. Tuki. Buki! Yay! Yeah, let's, yeah, let's go! Let's go, let's go, let's go. You know like um, Mambeti did uh, Hyenas I believe in 1973. And then he goes on a long break, almost 20 years, until 1992 when he does Hyenas. Uh, of course, the lead is uh, Mori and Anta. These are like college sweethearts, you know. They want to rebel against the system by leaving Senegal and pursuing a better life in Europe, specifically France. They go through a life of just trying to figure out how to get out of this country of Senegal and end up in France. Now you cut from that. Now Hyenas is the complete opposite uh, of Tukibuki in terms of casting. Now here we meet Draman and Rama too. These also former lovers, but now we see them in their senior life. They are like in their fifties, I believe. I can definitely compare these two characters, even though these are completely two different stories. Yeah. 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 I think these hyenas are kind of really sending some of the message we need to take a look. Um, going align with the situations of post-colonial of Senegal, economically and mentally. And now in this film we also see materialism. But maybe the only difference is that uh, uh Mambeti kind of expands it beyond France. He makes it like a a global issue now. We still meet Senegalese people who are still dreaming of uh, wealth. And that's not just Senegal. It's kind of a representation of, you know, the world that we find ourselves in as Africans or as people, wherever we live. Yeah, especially in terms of the characters he portray in the film, like there is a, like Japanese Asian, and then there's another woman wearing some traditional attire of somewhere in Africa. Those transcontinental and transnational images are really linking to the different um, people in the world. Like he really portrayed well development, how people change after they experience those power of materialisms, like they can buy whatever they want. The money can permeate in different places and mentality of even of institutional such as city hall, police department, and the church. Now, all these institutions, when Ramatu comes to town and calls the town people, and he's like, hey, I have big money and I want to pay all of you so that one of you can kill Draman. And all these institutions, even though they say that they cannot kill Draman publicly, Remember when this film starts, we see like, uh, you know, the debt collectors comes to the city hall and because the city hall is in huge debt, the debt collectors just de decide to take everything out of the city hall. So they really need money. The mayor really needs money. People in the film, they gradually change to be kind of hyenas and then they become kind of really out of rational. And then the way he juxtapose the images between people and the, yeah. the animals, it's also very creative. In yeah. uh, Mambaki's mind, people just became like animals. They mm. became like hyenas, you know. 
things that matter about humanity don't matter anymore money yeah. becomes in drive of everybody and then we should yeah remember how we can harmonize and then how we can um maintain our society well balanced with this materialisms yeah. and also with the morality and we also can find this distinctive um soundtrack which is it's oh, it's yeah. it seems like like a traditional music but the music it's just like using the vocals of the people it's a mixture of some are just instrumentals in other tracks he let like the women do the singing and they do the singing in a way that captures the already existing uh, musical styles in Senegal you know the traditional musical styles in Senegal you look at it and it, it becomes something really interesting it's like a clash of two very different cultures but at the end of the day we still get a story told The music is really beautiful and um whoever is maybe curious about that try to search for it on YouTube it's available on YouTube it's really amazing so to talk mm-hmm. about the Senegalese film and western african film in the post colonial era and there is um different senegalese directors and also different directors in different countries after the independence and the film was kind of become the the method to make the national building and to also raised the questions about the identity of Africa film used to portray what's going on in a political way est-ce que vos films sont bien compris en Europe non mais mettez-nous bien ça dans la tête moi l'Europe n'est pas mon centre pourquoi voulez-vous que je sois comme le tournesol qui tourne autour du soleil je suis moi-même le soleil Usman Sambeh right yeah who is called father of african cinema the way he portrayed the films and um leading the storyline it's quite didactic and it's quite um illustrative in the era mambeti is a kind of distinctive person who are really wants to combine in a creative way like the way he using images um some people would say oh that's really like um french way or like hollywood way because he really adopted well mostly influenced by the french wave in the 60s and the 50s part of the reason why they also have these obvious differences is uh, lies in the fact that you know mambeti taught himself how to make films whereas osman sembene uh, there's it, it's on record that he he did spend one year uh, studying cinema in russia so during that time he was able to work with some uh russian film directors and they kind of you know worked with the conventions of cinema and that kind of shapes uh, the way he tells his stories and then another thing that also does is you know if you look at their styles mambeti sometimes is a little bit you know is a bit a little bit radical you know his films can be a little bit dark sometimes you know, part of what pushes him to tell his stories was kind of disappointment uh within the society things that he, he saw and he did not like with people's choices in life and of course political um activities and leadership styles he expressed them very candidly uh with his films yeah yeah especially in this film mambeti are also in the film as you guys can see as um oh yeah yeah he's the prosecutor right yeah his presence in the film really sending us like to think about his positions as a filmmaker he's kind of storyteller to share what's going on in senegalese film there is always some um, like discourse and arguments about the role of african cinema and then like people are saying uh with the third cinema like african film always used to be like um, political method political material to guide people yeah. but through mambeti's film i think we don't need to like define the characteristic of african film like there is so much diversity and so much creativity he is very fluid i think i think uh, i like the fluidity of his style his film can go anywhere look Look at some of the montage shots he uses in this film. Animal shots from Uganda. Those hyenas you see. Then the ele- elephants were shot in Kenya and you find the carnival scene that that's shot somewhere in France. So these are kind of very unrelated um you know video sources from everywhere and then he puts them together within this film. And um when you look at it it all looked like it was all you know kind of part of one piece, one plan but it wasn't. So he just kind of assembled stuff. and it comes out like this so that kind of fluidity is really amazing 
Yes. They are true. The champions. How does Kolobane compare to Bambali, Senegalese town of Bambali, where uh, Sadio Mane is from? Um, this is a small town in the south part of Senegal. And uh, for years before money became famous and rich, uh, this town was struggling with a number of issues. And when you look at the issues that uh, Bambali is facing, it's kind of similar to the issues that Kolobane is facing in this film. Kolobane kind of gives us a hint of what smaller towns in Senegal are going through. And by reflection, it also kind of shows what smaller towns, even in places like Kenya, all over Africa are going through. Yeah, they don't get that much funding. And they're always at the mercy of, you know, someone to come uh, and, you know, do something in terms of development. Now we are confronted with really a very serious crisis, political crisis. Okay, for everyone, for thank you for watching our videos and we'll come back with another episode. Keep subscribing our channels because we have a lot more coming and you do not want to miss that. Until next time. And if you have any ideas or opinions on our perspective, please leave the comments. Bye! Yeah. Okay, that's, that's maybe better. Okay. <laughs>